Yo, buddies. Hey, it's Concert Buddy. Back in the building. Back making a video. Talking about vinyl finds. It's been a minute. And I hope the wait will be worth it. I'm about to show you some records that I've been looking for for quite a long time. I've been really making a conscious effort to knock off a lot of these grails over here and grails over there and focus with a lot more intentionality, a lot more purpose in getting these hard to find records. And I'm happy to report this video. I've done just that. So join me on this trip <laughs> to Grail City, hashtag Grail City, as I knock off several grails from the list. What are they? Ah, let me show you in three, two, one. Ah. I'm super pumped to show you some of these titles, these grails that I finally got off my hit list. But before I do, I wanted to talk about one title that wasn't on my hit list, but super excited that it came out nonetheless. And that is from Stone Temple Pilots. This is the debut album from the band Core. This is the Atlantic 75 reissue campaign that... Acoustic Sounds has been doing analog production and quality record press. I got so many names, it's hard to keep up. It's acronym soup. But when that series was announced, this was one of the titles that I was super pumped to pick up. This is a sticker from Vinyl Me, please, by the way. But this was one of the ones that I was happy to pre-order, excited, especially when I started getting some of the titles in this series, the Phil Collins, Bad Company, Matchbox 20, etc. I was really curious how Chad and team would execute 90s recordings. So a couple things on this one. Most important thing is it sounds great. It's on two discs, 45 RPM. Ryan K. Smith mastered it. Or now it's Ryan Smith. I'm not sure why he dropped the K. Maybe there's like a, a famous author out there suing him. Who knows? But Ryan, whoever Smith, mastered it. And he's really on fire lately. So big props there. This sounds great. I, I would like to think it's part mastering, part spreading it out over two discs because up to this point, most of the releases of this title have been on one disc, so it's been very compressed. The music hasn't had like that space, that literally run rate to be able to sound better. So, sounds great. Arguably the best sounding copy I have. I have five other copies of this, of different pressings, including the Walmart pressing from a couple of years ago, the Music on Vinyl, the Anniversary Edition, the Record Store Day first vinyl release, I think it was 2013, I have that one as well. So I've been chasing the elusive best sounding version. I think this is right up there. This is, this is probably it. One thing I did want to talk about this title, this is more of like a public service announcement is when I got my copy upon opening, I was disappointed to see that this had a matte finish on the, on the jacket. Now, first world problem. And as George Borden recently called out, on the Steve Westman stream, where I just kind of brought this to their attention. They're talking about this title. I want you to be nice until it's time to not be nice. Warden boomered me. He said, uh, you don't play with, you don't play with the jackets. And, and George, you're right, 100% right. You hit me with the salt and you're right. You don't play the jackets. However, my issue was more one, I've been waiting for a definitive copy of this. And they do such a great job with the series of the thick, stout and specific stout and jackets to get this kind of treatment. They even put this really cool you know, made from analog icon on the jackets now, which I think is a real nice touch. But on the website, the literal website, the product description page, PDP, for those scoring at home, it was still calling out this title as the laminated jacket. Like the other titles I had received in the series that were laminated. So a little disappointed on that. I emailed their customer service department and spoke to Bud, the customer service manager, who told me that they were just having a lot of issues with the series and the laminated jacket. So going forward, they're just going to make them all the matte finish. So be on the lookout for that, including STP's follow-up album to this purple, which is part of this Atlantic 75 series. It still says on the website, laminated jacket, film lamination, I think is the exact call out. They have since updated the website for this particular title, but Anyway, just something to be cognizant of. It's a first world problem, first and foremost. The record does sound great. I'm very happy that they were able to execute this with excellence. 
<laughs> to borrow some corporate speak. But uh, just be on the lookout for that. It's something that was a little disappointed. There are a couple other videos out in the community. I'm looking at you, Rich, at VU Meters calling, uh, basically doing a shootout. And, and Rich can speak a lot more eloquently about soundstage and imaging and all these things that I'm the last person you should be taking audio advice from. But he agrees. It sounds really good. Anyway, if you love the 90s music, grew up on the 90s music like I did, if you really enjoy Stone Temple Pilots like I do and have, got to get this. I'm not saying to go out and buy it, but highly recommend it if you do. Yeah. All right. The first record I'm going to show is part of my trip to Grail City is the 1994 album from the Black Crows. This is Amorica. Uh, it's a very suggestive cover. I may have to, <laughs> to add the blur bar here. <laughs> if the children, if the children are watching. It's a crotch party right up oh. in here. But anyway, 1994, this is on white vinyl. This is one on my list over seven years. Uh, this album was recorded at Sound, Studi Sound City Studios, the infamous or famous recording studio. If you watch the documentary about it, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is a great album, something that I've had my eye on for a long time. Like I said, it's been on my want list over seven years. Finally ran into a copy. My, one of my locals had it and actually had to make an offer on it on Discogs of all things. So I took that as a sign of the vinyl gods are saying, this is it. Made a fair offer and accepted it. I was able to pick it up, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, this one has been eluding me for a long time. I see it out in the wild sometimes. It's always north of hundred dollars. So it's, a price point I just wasn't comfortable going to. So I got it south of $100. Happy to pick that up. And man, I think all Sound City Studios mastered albums, recorded albums are just awesome. And this is no different. So really happy to pick this up. Finally. And I know they just had that new album. Was it called Happiness Bastards? The Black Crows just put out. Sounds really good too. If you haven't listened to it, stream it. I haven't picked up a vinyl copy yet because I wanted to stream it first, make sure that it was that signature crow sound and not just another Rich Robinson, you know, kind of sounding Rich Robinson specific project, which I mean, in fairness, a lot of stuff is that said, it sounds really good. And so I'm going to pick up a vinyl copy. I also wanted to weigh out because, you know, we live in the era of all kinds of variants and deluxe editions and so forth. So in some titles, particularly new releases, I kind of like lay back in the cut and let them come out and make sure it's something one I want to add to my collection and two I want to get the color variant I like the most or if there's one that has bonus tracks or whatever and so anyway Happiness Bastards good album check it out if you got time stream it first and then pick it up on vinyl why not yeah! now this next album hasn't been on my grail list for seven years <laughs> like the last one I've shown and like some futures that I'm about to show in this video have been but this is one I've been looking for. It came out in 2002. This is the Johnny Cash, probably the Johnny Cash, Rick Rubin project that they did it toward the end of Johnny Cash's life. This is the fourth version. This is American Four. The Man Comes Around. They've reissued this, I think, once or twice. It's in print right now, matter of fact, if you want to get it for like 30 bucks. But I've been looking for the original pressing because, I don't know, I'm an original pressing kind of guy. And I'm glad I did. This was actually recorded... A lot of the songs with Mike Campbell and Ben Montage from the from the uh, the Heartbreakers, Tom Petty band. Uh, you know, if you recall, they did a lot of work with Rick Rubin on some previous Tom Petty and the Heartbreaker albums, and they were also the instrumentationalists. Is that a word? They're also playing a lot of the instruments uh, in Tom Petty's solo record, Wildflowers, which I think it was '94. Rick Rubin produced that as well. Uh, but there's a lot of other guest uh, musicians who take part in this project on this particular album. You're talking about on Personal Jesus, which is a Depeche Mode cover that they did on this one. Uh, John Frusciante from the Chili Peppers plays acoustic guitar. I think Fiona Apple even uh, lays some background. She does some background vocals on Bridge Over Troubled Water, which is the Simon and Garfunkel classic. But this one is undoubtedly known and best known for Johnny Cash's cover of Hurt, the Nine Inch Nail song. Haunting, prophetic, excellent, excellent song. To the point where when Trent Reznor was asked about this, if he had heard Johnny Cash's cover of his song, he even said, look, it's not my song anymore. Which I thought was a very humble way to say, like, we did it, I wrote it, it's good. But Johnny Cash, it was his song. I, essentially, the, the universe, I wrote it for him because his version cannot be topped. So I thought that was a kind of cool thing to say. But anyway, picked this up. Uh, the same shop, I picked up that Black Crows record. Had it uh, on their website, and I couldn't believe it, so I couldn't uh, wait to get this one. 
home to my record collection as soon as possible. Well, that's good for you. Now, for me, a trip to Grail City would not be complete without picking up a hip hop record. You know, hip hop something that's kind of under shown in the vinyl community, at least as far as I traverse. And there are some channels out there that talk about it, um, and I appreciate it. And when I watch those videos, I definitely tell those creators, hey, thanks, because I do feel this is an underserved part of the community. That said, this is Mac 10's 1997 album based on a true story. Now, this isn't like a classic of hip hop per se, but to me, it means something because I think of my freshman year of college, I'm away from home, this album comes out, and I just enjoyed the hell out of it. Got the CD, I think it was at like Sam Goody's at the mall <laughs> where I was going to college. I mean, that's a couple dated things, CD, mall, but Sam Goody. Uh, all that said, this is an album that's been on my want list for over seven years again. Uh, I've seen it once in a while. A local shop of mine had a beat up copy for like 20 bucks. And it's a double LP and it's not a gatefold and it was rough. And so I just passed on. I've been waiting for that copy, the, the good enough or the good copy to come my way. And for years, for years, I've been looking for this thing. Finally, finally pulled it out. Um, this one... If you know Mac 10, you may be more familiar with Mac 10 uh, as part of the Westside Connection supergroup, the hip hop supergroup that he formed with Ice Cube and Dub C. And, and uh, they put out a couple different albums, which are to me hip hop classics. The first one in particular uh, is, is the one to get. But regardless, this album, really good. I always think about his like take on it's a song called Inglewood Swingin', which was kind of a take on the Hollywood Swingin'. Song from back in the day, like the funk and soul song. I but also Backyard Boogie is one of my favorite songs on this album. But um, Ice Cube and I think Snoop is on a track on here called Only in California. Can I believe I finally found this, to be honest with you? This is one, you know, people always ask me, what, what grails are you looking for? And what records are you looking for? I've been very blessed and very fortunate to knock a lot of those off my list, like True True Grails. But this one has just been, it's just been impossible for me to find. Now, maybe in your area, you've seen this and been like, what about, you know, is that? What are you looking at, butthead? But for me, finally, found it on Discogs, uh, the seller, you know, I, I wrote him the email, hey, if you don't mind, please ship the vinyl outside the jacket to avoid any seam splits. He accommodated, appreciated that. Shipped it in the stupid Uline mailer, which I absolutely hate. But now I'm kind of conditioned to anytime I'm buying from a direct, like a, a private buyer, you have to, expectations low on how they're gonna ship it and they're probably gonna use a Uline. I'm pleasantly surprised when they don't. I'm pleasantly surprised when they pack like a champion and I appreciate that. But Anyway, if you get the, you should always ask for the records to be shipped outside the jacket. So then you won't get the stupid seam splits. Seam splits really piss me off. If you get the Uline mailer, maybe get some dings once in a while. But anyway, Mac 10 based on true story. Finally, checking it off the list. Less than $70. I'll take it. <laughs> the main course of this video, buddies, is one that I'm just stoked that I finally got a copy in original press of the 1990 classic from Megadeth, Rust in Peace. This has been reissued several times. I think 2008, the Capitol Vaults, I have a copy of that. 2023, even last year, this was reissued. Originals are not cheap. I find, in fact, I've seen them a couple times. Last time I saw one in the wild, I actually saw two, was when I did my vacation in Hilton Head Island and that new record store there. I did a video on the channel. I'll probably put a link to it somewhere. Um, he had two copies, but I'd already spent a healthy amount of money with him and I wasn't ready to drop uh, 300 plus because these things go for a lot of money. I did not pay anywhere near $300. Fortunately, I'm part of like a Facebook group that does like auction style kind of selling and trading and and essentially they'll somebody who's a member will say I have Megadeth Rust in Peace starting bid and it ends in 24 hours, blah, blah, blah. And then people bid in the comments. And so fortunately I was able to pull this one. Uh, the guy was very nice, shipped it excellently. Um, this is on that Purple Capital label. Sounds really good. Um, does have a little ring wear, which is kind of a drag. But like I said, these things are going for 300. When I got this and put it in my Discogs, 
their copies for sale were north of four hundred dollars. So knowing that I'm never gonna pay four hundred dollars for this album, just gonna be honest, getting it well, well, well short of that, I was very happy to finally grab this because, like I said, I had some reissues, but I'm an OG hunter. I'm like Steve Irwin, the Crocodile Hunter, the OG hunter, and to be able to find something like this because heavy metal albums in particular are very hard to find in good condition because people just listen to them. Awesome. But they haven't, <laughs> they haven't stood the test of time because people listen to them and beat the shit out of them. But to not pay the going rate to get this, you know, again, the, the vinyl is in really good shape, except for one little mark on track one side a that I can kind of hear. It takes about five or six revolutions and then it goes away. But Outside of that, outside of bugging my OCD, I mean, this is a metal record, so I don't really, you don't really hear it. You hear it, again, I'm anal retentive, I hear it, but happy to finally get this off the want list into my collection. It looks just like it does in our history books, only it seems more real. Buddies, that's it. I want to thank you for joining me on this trip, sitting shotgun to Grail City. Tell me what you think about these pickups. Tell me, more importantly... Have you been knocking off any grails off your list? What are they? I'd love to hear those stories in the comments below. It is bar none my favorite part of doing these videos. Vinyl community is awesome. 99% of the community is terrific. <laughs> so <laughs> I would caution anyone to lean into that part of the community and not the 1% who are just jabronis. If you're referring to me as butt buddy, yes, I do have a name. It's Brennan Huff. So there's my parting wisdom. There's my Jerry Springer, my final thought. <laughs> anyway, buddies, thanks for going on this journey with me, walking through these grails. I'm stoked that I've got these in my collection now. But now I've got to do the fun part, and that's listen to them. I've listened to a couple of them already, but when you get the chance to get your grails, get any records, even like that Acoustic Sounds, SDP Core, when you get the chance, yeah, just spin it. See you soon. Well, well, well. How the turntables. Well, we're out of time.